Chapter 56 They hadn't gone much further before they detected noise rumbling through the caverns, low and thunderous, like a distant train. They came to another fork in the tunnel, into further darkness and rock and nothingness. The other ran into a set of iron doors, hinged into the regolith walls. The doors looked ancient. Their sole ornamentation was a faded label painted on the lower corner of each door. Storeroom 16, Sector LW12. A tiny screen had been embedded into the wall beside the doors. It was old and outdated, and the text kept flickering. Lunar Regiment, 117, packs 1009 to 1020. The ground and walls thrummed with activity beyond those doors, laughter and shouting and thumping footsteps. For the first time since she'd embarked on this quest, Winter felt a flutter of nervousness in her stomach. Scarlet glanced at her. It isn't too late to go back. I disagree. Sighing, Scarlet studied the screen. <sighs> Eleven packs, so around a hundred soldiers, give or take. Winter hummed, a sound without commitment. A hundred soldiers. Animals, killers, predators. Or so everyone claimed. Had she truly gone mad to think she could change them? Her eyes began to mist, surprising her. She had not realized that thinking of her own imbalance would sadden her. But the feel of her ribs crushing against her heart was unmistakable. Why did you follow me? Staring at the solid doors. Knowing what's wrong with me. Knowing that I'm broken. Scarlet scoffed. Huh. That is an excellent question. A loud thud was followed by hollers. The walls reverberated around them. They had not been noticed. Scarlet was right. They could turn around and leave. Winter could admit she was delusional, and no one should ever listen to her. She was adept only on making the wrong decisions. I couldn't let you go on your own, said Scarlet, most of the venom gone from her tone. Why? I don't know. Call me crazy. Winter shut her eyes. I won't. You're not damaged like I am. There are not a hundred scattered pieces blowing farther and farther away from each other. How would you know? Listing her head, Winter dared to look up again. Scarlet leaned against the regolith wall. My father was a liar and a drunk. My mother left me when I was a kid and never looked back. I witnessed a man kill my grandmother and then rip out her throat with his teeth. I was kept in a cage for six weeks. I was forced to cut off my own finger. I'm pretty sure I'm falling in love with a guy who has been genetically modified and mentally programmed to be a predator. Ooh, red flags. So all things considered, I'd say I have a fair amount of scattered pieces myself. Winter felt her resolve crumbling. You came with me because it was the quickest path to death then. A crease formed between Scarlet's eyebrows. I'm not suicidal. She said, the sharpness returning to her tongue. I came with you because... She crossed her arms over her chest. Because ever since my grandma took me in, I've heard people tell me she was crazy. A kooky, belligerent old woman. Always good for a joke around town. They had no idea how brilliant she was. That crazy old woman risked everything she had to protect Cinder when she was a baby. And in the end, she sacrificed her own life rather than give up Cinder's secret. I still feel like Gromer didn't have to die. She was brave and strong, and everyone else was too close-minded to see it. She rolled her eyes, annoyed with her own frustration. <sighs> I guess I'm just hoping that despite all the absurd things you say, you might also be a little bit brilliant. That this time, you might be right. She held up her finger. That said, if you're going to tell me how stupid this idea was to begin with, and we should run like hell, then I'm right behind you. Beyond the door, something crashed, and there was a round of boisterous laughter, then a howl. A chorus of a dozen other voices rose up to meet it, sounding victorious. A muscle twitched in Winter's jaw, but her lip had stopped trembling. She hadn't cried. She'd been too focused on Scarlet's words to remember to be upset. I believe they were boys once, and they can be boys again. I believe I can help them, 
and they will help me in return. Scarlet sighed, sounding a little disappointed and a little resigned, but not surprised. And I believe you're not as crazy as you want everyone to think you are. Winter's gaze flittered towards Scarlet, surprised, but Scarlet didn't return it. She stepped forward and placed her palm on one of the heavy doors. So, do we knock? I do not think they would hear us. Another round of howls echoed through the cavern. Winter swiped her fingers across the screen, and the text changed. Security clearance, identification required. She pressed the pads of her fingers onto the screen, and it brightened, welcoming her. The door began to open, creaking on ancient hinges. When Winter turned back, Scarlet was staring at her aghast. You do realize you just alerted the queen to where you are, right? Winter shrugged. By the time she finds us, either we will have an army to protect us, or we will have already become meat and marrow and bone. D okay. She drifted through the doors and instantly froze. Scarlet had been right. There were about a hundred men in the 117th Regiment of Levana's army, though men was a general term for what they'd become. Soldiers felt inadequate, too. Winter had been hearing stories of her stepmother's army for years, but they were far from beastly than she had ever imagined, with malformed bodies, fur down the sides of their faces, and snarled lips curved around enormous teeth. This storeroom, which had begun life as housing for the first colonists, was equipped to hold many more than a hundred people. The ceiling reached three stories high and was rough with divots and stalactites, where air bubbles had formed and lava had dripped eons ago. Though the cavern was ancient and impenetrable, someone long ago had had the foresight to reinforce it with interspersed stone columns, countless alcoves, and more corridors stretched in every direction, leading to additional barracks or training grounds. Around the exterior were dingy lockers and open crates, many of which had been left wide open and neglected. Benches and exercise equipment filled the remaining space. Freestanding punching bags, chin-up bars, weights, many of them had been shoved aside to make room for the main entertainment in the room's center. The howls dissolved into cheering and whooping again. Canine teeth flashed. Most of them were in some state of undress, missing shirts, bare feet, a stunning amount of hair in places that Winter wasn't certain were natural or not. A shudder danced over her skin. Scarlet's words rang back to her. They will do what they're told, and that will be to eat us. Scarlet was right. This had been a mistake. She was not brilliant. She was losing her mind. The door slammed shut, making her jump. One man jerked around to face them. His gaze fell on Winter, skipped to Scarlet, then returned. First curious, then inevitably ravenous. A sly smile curled on one side of his mouth. Well, well, he mused. Eating time already? Chapter 57 The man who had spoken grabbed the nearest soldier by the neck and tossed him toward the center of the circle. Shouts of surprise and anger rolled through the gathered men as a few toppled beneath their comrades' weight. Within seconds, there was a furor of flying fists and snapping jaws. One man slashed at the one who had noticed them, sharpened fingernails, drawing lines of blood across his chest. Ugh. A second later, he was also picked up and hurled into the turmoil. Manners! Someone yelled loud enough that his voice shook through the walls, and Winter had a quick and searing vision of the dome of lava rock crumbling on top of them. It would start with a quaking of the walls, then a few dribbles of dust and pebbles, until a crack drove its way from one end of the cavern to the other, opening wide and, there are ladies in our presence, said the mutant who had first seen them. His nose crinkled at the words ladies. The attention of a hundred hybrid soldiers landed on Winter and Scarlet. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous for them. As eyebrows rose and thorny gazes raked over them. Ugh. The men seemed to forget their brawl. They started to spread out. Lithe, muscular bodies 
creeping between the mess of equipment with agonizing patience, noses twitching, tongues tapping at sharp teeth. <clears throat> Hair prickled at the back of Winter's neck, and she found herself rooted to the floor, shocked by the sudden, breathable silence. Once the crowd had dispersed, she could see that their focus had been on a fight between two of the soldiers, both of whom were bleeding and swollen and grinning, as intrigued as the rest. It was impossible to tell which of them had been winning the fight prior to the interruption. There was an abundance of scars and faded bruises on all of the men, suggesting that such brawls were a common occurrence, a way to pass the time while waiting to be sent to Earth and take part in Levana's war. Fear pulsed through winter. What if she had been wrong? Hello, pretty ladies, said one of the soldiers, rubbing his whiskered jaw. Are you lost? Winter shrank closer to Scarlet, but Scarlet pulled away, stepping forward to meet them. Scarlet was the brave one, the resilient one, proving it as she tilted back her head in mock defiance. Which one of you is in charge? said Scarlet, fisting her hands on her hips. We want to speak with your alpha. A dull cackle spread through them. <laughs> Which one? said the first mutant. Eleven packs, eleven alphas. The strongest one, said Scarlet, piercing him with a glower, as fierce as any winter had ever seen. If you're not sure which one that is, we'll wait while you fight it out. Are you sure you don't want to take your pick, pretty lady? One asked as he prowled behind them, cutting off their exit. No, not the exit. Not that Winter had any hope of running. She could tell they were trying to intimidate her and Scarlet, and she could feel to her bones how well it was working. I'm sure any of us would be happy to satisfy whatever needs you might have. Scarlet glared at him from the corner of her eye. I already have an alpha mate to satisfy my needs. Okay. And he could slaughter any one of you. The man barked and a rough cackle rumbled through the rest of them. The first soldier stepped closer to Scarlet, and his expression was intrigued again. She's telling the truth, he said, silencing the laughter. His son is all over her. One of us. His eyes narrowed. Or... A special operative? Alpha Zay of Kesley, said Scarlet. Heard of him? A beat. A smirk. No. Scarlet clicked her tongue. Too bad. I can already tell he's both twice the man and twice the wolf of any of you. He could teach you a thing or two. Why are you trying to start things? The man laughed again, amused. I didn't realize they were letting our pack brothers take mates on Earth. More reason to anticipate our deployments. Oh, planting ideas. Bad ideas. Winter pressed her sweating palms against her sides, grateful that Scarlet had their attention. If she'd been forced to speak, her mouth would have spouted incoherent mutterings, and they would have laughed at her one moment and sunk their teeth into her the next, jaws clamping around her limbs, teeth tearing her muscles from the bones. We're not here to discuss my love life or yours, said Scarlet. You seem to be the most chatty. Do you nominate yourself as the leader here? He tilted his head in a manner that reminded Winter of Ryu, how he would sometimes cock his ears when he heard the gamekeeper arriving with a meal. Alpha Storm at your service. He dipped into a mocking bow. Though he wasn't larger than the others, he moved with an unnatural grace, like Wolf, like Ryu. And at the service of the pretty thing back there, I suggest you speak fast, pretty lady. I can hear my packed stomachs growling. One of the soldiers ran his tongue over his bottom lip. Scarlet turned and gave Winter a look. Shivering from head to toe, Winter reached for Scarlet, using her shoulder for balance. The soldiers laughed. Winter, Scarlet hissed. I'm frightened, Scarlet. Scarlet's expression turned to stone. Perhaps you would like to go outside and compose yourself, and we can come back later, she said, speaking through clenched teeth. Winter shuddered at Scarlet's anger, though she knew Scarlet had a right to it. Coming here had been her idea. If they both died here, it would be her fault. But she wouldn't allow it. These were men, she reminded herself, men who deserve life and happiness as much as anyone. Holding firm to that thought, she forced herself away from Scarlet and was grateful when the dizziness receded.
I'm Winter Haley Blackburn, Princess of Luna, she said, and could tell even in her own ears how faintly her voice carried. Not at all like Scarlet's. I need your help. Eyes flashed, delighted. In return, I wish to help you. Amusement, hunger, less curiosity than she would have hoped. She gulped. Queen Lavanna, my stepmother, has treated you with cruelty and unfairness. She has taken you from your families and acted as though you are nothing to her but scientific experiments. She has locked you away in these caves for no other purpose than to be sent to Earth and fight in her war. And what will you be given for your service? They all waited with their hard and sparkling eyes, watching Winter like she was their afternoon snack, still cooking on a spit. It was not unlike the look she'd received from countless men in Lavana's court. Nothing, she said, shoving her fear into the bottom of her stomach. If you survive your battles, you'll come back here and be enslaved in these caverns until she needs you again. You will not be allowed to return to your families. You will not rejoin our society and live what lives you may once have dreamed of living. Back before you were... You were... Monsters, suggested one of the men, grinning around the word. I do not believe you are monsters. I believe you have been given very few choices, and you are dealing with the consequences as well as you can. A snort came from Alpha Storm. <clears throat> Who knew we would be receiving such counsel from the princess herself today? Tell me, pretty highness. Does this therapy session come with refreshments? Your friend, perhaps? said another. She smells delicious. Scarlet crossed her arms, fingers digging into her elbows. Winter squared her shoulders. We came here to give you another choice. The people of Luna are planning a rebellion. In two days, we will be marching into the central dome of Artemisia. We plan to overwhelm the queen and her court, to overthrow her, and put an end to her tyranny. I ask that you join us, Fight on our behalf and help us end the rule that took you from your lives and turned you into soldiers. Ensure that you will never become prisoners or experiments or animals created for Lavana's amusement ever again. A silence settled over them, as if they were waiting to make sure she was finished. Winter's search for some indication they were even listening. She felt like a lamb in their den. She has pretty words. Winter turned toward the voice. It was one of the men who had been involved in the fight. Fresh blood had dried at the corner of his lip. He tipped his head when he saw that he had her attention, his eyelids dipping suggestively. Not quite as pretty as her face. Except for the scars. She jumped and spun around. She hadn't heard this soldier step so close, and now he was hovering over her. <laughs> He dragged a sharp-tipped nail down her cheek. Where'd these come from, pretty lady? She didn't, couldn't answer. An arm wrapped around Winter's shoulders, pulling her back. Stop it, said Scarlet, tucking Winter behind her, though it was useless. They were surrounded. Were you listening to her? You can call yourselves soldiers or wolf packs or whatever you want, but the truth is, you're nothing but slaves. Winter is offering you freedom. She's given you a choice, which is more than Lavana has ever offered. Will you help us or not? You'll be slaughtered, someone whispered against Winter's ear. She gasped and turned again, locking her back against Scarlet's. The soldiers crept closer, predators toying with their catch, luxuriating in the anticipation of the meal. A bunch of pathetic civilians are going to stand up against the queen, another said. They don't stand a chance. And another, do you know what the queen will do on to hold them back, if there are too many to manipulate? Us, spoke a third, her army. You mean her lapdogs, said Scarlet, and though her tone was mocking, her back was pressing against Winter, just as forcefully. Her pets? The soldiers' faces twitched. If you side with us, said Winter, we can win, we will win. What will happen to us if we side with you and you lose? said Alpha Storm. One of them brushed a finger down Winter's throat. No, don't touch her! Her heart skipped. 
With you beside us, she said, her voice wavering. We will not lose. Her eyes began to water from fear. You can stop now. You frightened us enough. I know you're not the vicious creatures you're pretending to be, that you've been trained and tormented and built to be. You are men. You are citizens of Luna. If you help me, if you fight for me, I can help you get your lives back. You can't tell me you don't want that. She could feel their breath on her now. She could see the colorful flecks in their eyes, smell the sweat and blood on their skin. One of the men was sucking on a knuckle as if he couldn't wait to taste her flesh. They were a noose growing tighter, pulse hiccuping. Winter raised her hand to her throat where the soldier had touched her. She felt a prickly rope there, tightening, squeezing. She squeaked and tried to wrap her fingers around it to form a barrier between the rope and her throat but it was already too tight. Spoiled little princess. One of the soldiers hissed, stooping down so that she could feel his breath on her cheek. Winter shivered and knew her gaze was watery and pleading. We don't fight for princesses. We play with them. Alpha Storm smirked. Ready to play? Okay, that is the end of chapter 57. Chapters 58 and 59 are coming out next Monday. Thanks for listening. Please like, please subscribe, share, comment below, help the algorithm, <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time. Laters!